everybody, welcome back to a story of Miss Cory. I thought that since we were all in the mood to talk about fall, that maybe we ought to make some fall themed crafts to go along with our story, Hello Fall. So I thought, why don't we make a bird feeder because the birds get really hungry in the fall as they start to get a little bit warmer and um, thicker feathers to keep them through the cold winter. And they're always looking for food when the snow falls. So this is something that's easy and fun to do and um, you can make with everything you have at home. And then I also thought that we could make some Indian corn craft. And um, I always like to decorate my home with Indian corn and my kids always like to play with it. And the, and the cool thing about Indian corn is you can actually pop it in your microwave and make popcorn. I don't know how many of you knew that, but um, we did that um, last year and that was a lot of fun. So go ahead and just throw in a paper bag for a couple minutes, cut the husk off and throw that in the microwave. And, you're well on your way to making some fresh popcorn. But the kind of Indian corn we're gonna make in our craft here today is not the edible kind. This is just the fun kind that kids can get messy making. We're gonna use bubble wrap and some templates and some raffita ribbon to make our cute little Indian corn with that. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first craft we're gonna work on is gonna be our bubble wrap Indian corn craft. So to do this craft, if you come down to the Herb Memorial Library in Mifflinburg, um, we have these kits all pre -pep prepared for you to go. Um, but if you can't make it to our library, you can go ahead and download the template for the Indian corn from the website Kiwi Crate. And it's a free template that you can go ahead and print off. Print it off on cardstock paper because you want to have a nice thick solid background to support your Indian corn on. You're also going to need some bubble wrap. So if you've got any packages from Amazon lately, don't get rid of the bubble wrap that it comes in. You're going to need some raffita ribbon. We went and picked a tri-color kind of ribbon. So it's orange and, and um, blonde and the green, or red and, and green. And then you're gonna need some paint, a paintbrush, a marker, a hole puncher, some glue, and some scissors. So like I said, the, the first thing you need to do is to print off your template. And when you have it printed off, then you need to cut out the, um, the outlines of the Indian corn. We went ahead and did that already. And we did our templates actually printed for the kids at the library out of yellow cardstock. And here is this, and they're all cut out for us. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay it on our bubble wrap. We've also pre-cut in those kits for everybody. If you don't have it, you'll have to pre-cut it. Um, it's about you know a foot long by eight inches wide. So it's not a lot of bubble wrap that you need. Um, and if some of the bubbles are already popped, that's okay. But try to get stuff that's not completely popped your kids can have fun popping the scraps later. Then you're going to want to take your marker, either um, a black Sharpie or a color Sharpie, and you want to flip your bubble wrap over so that you're drawing on the smooth side. It's a lot easier to draw that way than it is on the actual bubbles. And you just want to sit here and trace around the uh, template of the Indian corn. And try to get it as close to the corn as you can. Sometimes it's hard to draw on the bubble wrap. Um, but that's kind of the shape that you're going for there. It's okay if it overlaps a little bit. Um, that way it'll still sit centered on your, um, on your template later when we're done. But do try to get as close to the edge as possible. For kids that are learning to draw, this is a great opportunity for tracing and developing that um, coordination skills between their eyes and their hands. And then the next step you need to do is to cut out your bubble wrap. I recommend really sharp scissors. The bubble wrap can be high, kind of hard to cut through um, if you don't have sharp scissors. And if you don't have sharp scissors, you'll have to make little cuts like this to come all the way around. And you want to cut out your bubble wrap completely. And we have those pre-cut out also so that it looks like this when you're done. Now comes the fun part. Now it's time to paint. So you're going to want to find an assortment of colors um, that remind you of Indian corn. So we found yellow and orange and red and um, two different shades of brown. And you can either put your um, paint on a plate and paint off of that or directly put the paint on the bubble wrap. Um, I've done it both ways. Um, we're gonna go ahead tonight and put the paint directly on the bubble wrap. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and shake up the yellow a little bit here. And we're gonna put just a little bit, little drops of it around where we want our, our yellow to show. And it's okay if it's messy, it's okay if the paint smears. Um, there's another, there's two ways to do this too. If your kids like to finger paint, let them smear around with their fingers and get all messy and fun. 
If your kids um, don't like to get all messy, I know some kids don't like to get their hands dirty or messy. Um, I think we're out of that red. Um, then go ahead and use a paintbrush. And if you don't you want to do that, your other option is to put paint on one side, and this is how I did this craft, is I put paint on one side and then I smushed the um, other layer of bubble wrap on top of it like a sandwich. And then we smushed it and smeared it all together. And that gave us the most vivid colors um, for, for creating our Indian paint. The paint that I did with a paintbrush, oops, that's too much there, um, ended up, oh, I can show you that one. When I do the paintbrush, it comes off very pale like, kind of like that, and it flakes off a little bit easier. So it kind of gives you the impression that somebody's already eaten the Indian corn. And you know, that's okay too, because you know, sometimes the birds and the mice get into it. We had that last year, the mice got into my Indian corn that we had saved and they completely ravaged it. All that was left was the husk. I hope they had a good time. So we've got different colors of paint that are on here now. And one more for the darker color. There we go, a little bit darker brown because Indian corn sometimes can be darker brown. All right, and so there we have it on that. Now, like I said, you go ahead and use your paintbrush and you can smoosh it on here on the bubble wrap. It's going to be um, kind of sticky and, and pop-like. Um, but this is a good, fun, messy craft for little fingers to get involved with. Um, it is quite fun to use your fingers and, and play around. So if your kids really don't mind mess and you don't mind a mess and you've got paper towel nearby, I strongly recommend that you um, just let the kids get messy with it. Make sure they've got a paint shirt on and that you've protected your surfaces. But just let them get messy and have fun making this. And then you want to make sure that they get in the, in the cracks and the crevices really good so that it, um, it'll dry. Now this will take a long time to dry. So this is going to be a two-part project, which is why we're saving the, um, the bird's craft for the middle. So maybe you want to start this project with your kiddos and then come back to it. I have a little too much brown on that, but that's okay too. If you, if you don't like the way it looks, you can always wipe it off with a paper towel and put fresh paint on. Or you can just wait for it to dry and put another layer on. Either way works. Um, you can do as you like. So we need to let this dry now thoroughly. So we're going to set that off to one side. And while that's drying, like I said, if you guys want to proceed and do the, the bird seed craft while you wait, um, that would certainly be an option. But since ours are already dry, we're going to go ahead and finish this craft for you now, and then we'll do the bird food your craft. So we'll take the ones that we did with the paintbrush earlier. We actually did three of them. And as you can see, the paint does flake off. So I, I kind of like, um, I'm, I'm a big fan of putting the paint on a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier, like we did in our sample. Um, and then just letting it dry, because if you don't put it on really thick, it flakes off and I don't think it looks as nice. But you know, you can do it any way you like, any way your kids like. So the next step you need to do is to get your glue and you want to run a couple um, strands of glue up and down your template. Because now we're gonna glue your nice dried um, popcorn bubble wrap, painted bubble wrap onto your template. And there we go. Again, if you guys like to get messy, let them use your fingers to smear the glue on. I don't recommend a glue stick, it doesn't hold as well. Um, you're gonna wanna use school glue. And then just line up your corn and stick it on. This one's really faint. The paint is really coming off of this one. It didn't hold as well. Okay, so there's that. And then you're gonna take your hole puncher and you're going to punch a hole at the very top. If you don't have a hole puncher, that's okay. You can use a sharp knife to punch all the way through. You just need to punch a hole there to run your raffita ribbon through. And my little corn is shedding everywhere. Look at this. All right keeping a clean workstation. So then you want to take your raffita ribbon. Now raffita ribbon can be really messy to work with because it falls apart easily. But you want to kind of get it all lined up into a straight line, as straight as you can, kind of even at the ends if possible, so that you get a nice long line. And then you can kind of even it out with your scissors. And then I recommend that you kind of twist the end a little bit. It'll make it a little bit easier to go through your holes. And just take your corn and run it like a needle through the th through a or a thread through a needle. Run it right through the hole like so. And then go with the other one. 
And there again too, you wanna to run it right through that hole like so. And then we're just gonna come down to this end and even this end up like that. And then you just wanna tie a nice simple bowed knot at the top. Just a simple, like how you tie your shoes. So if you're teaching your kids how to tie, this is a good opportunity to show them too. Again, you kind of want to keep a wrapper ribbon smooth and clumped together to make it easier to bring it around and knot it. And there you have your corn. Didn't that turn out kind of cute? I still like it even if the paint is flaking off of that one. I did read somewhere that if you want to try to save it, you can um, spray hairspray on it. That can sometimes adhere better to the paint and keep it longer. Um, but I have not tried that, so I don't know if that works or not. So that's one option too. Okay, so that's how you make the Indian corn. Now the other craft I wanted to make for you guys, again, was the bird feeder. And this is um, completely organic because it's made out of a pine cone. So the first step you need to do is to go find pine cones. And if you don't live near a pine, if you don't have a pine tree in your yard or don't live near one, um, go to parks. There's tons of pine cones falling this time of year. And if, again, if you come to the library and you pick up this craft, we have pine cones for you. So this is really um, an easy one to do. So then what you want to do is get a paper plate so you have something to work on. And you're going to need um, some ribbon or some twine. We did red ribbon on this one. We're going to do twine on this one just to show you the difference. And again, you just kind of want to take the, you want to take 12, 12 to 14 inches of string, ribbon, yarn, whatever. Do not use wire and do not use thin, rib, thin string because um, the weight of the, the pine cone will snap that. And you can also injure the birds as they eat if you use a really, really thin wire. So you want to use um, like a ribbon, yarn, twine, something like that, that won't hurt the birds. And then you just want to fold it over on top of itself. And then you're going to wrap it around your finger to produce um, kind of a, a hole, a loop like that. If you guys can see that. And then you want to run it through like so. So you get a little knot on itself like that and pull tight. So that what you end up having then is a circled with a knot on the end. Then you want to take your pine cone and you just want to drape your circle over the top of it and kind of weave that, that circle onto it. You want to go about towards the top, not, not too far down. And then I twisted it and I came back over it one more time so we could secure it to the pine cone just like that. And then you can take your scissors and you can cut off the excess thread here so the birds don't think that that's food and eat it. Okay, there we go. Now the next step that you need, once you've got your pine cone all ready to go, is you're going to need some peanut butter. You can use crunchy peanut butter or regular peanut butter. Um, and uh, you can use a whole organic, whatever kind of peanut butter you like. And we're just going to smear this on the sides of the pine cone. Birds love peanut butter, so does my dog. So if you're gonna do this around your dog, make sure you share or keep these up so that the dog does not eat the pine cone because my dog would probably eat the pine cone. She's not that smart. Cute, but not smart. And you just wanna put a nice layer of peanut butter all over the pine cone. Now, I don't recommend if you're doing this that you reuse this peanut butter jar for anything else other than your bird feeders now because you keep sticking the knife back into the jar um, off the dirty pine cones. So this would now become your pet or bird pine peanut butter jar. And you just want to keep getting it around. Again, this would be a nice, fun, messy craft for kids with their fingers getting it all gooey and messy. If your kids have sensory issues and they don't like to touch this kind of stuff, um, you can put gloves on their hands um, or just let it smear as best as they can on a plate and put it on that way too. But the better you coat the pine cone with peanut butter, the better the bird seed is going to stick. And depending on how many birds you want to feed, you want to make sure you have enough seed stuck to your pine cone. Then, last step here is to get some bird seed. Again, at the library, we've provided you guys with a bag of bird seed so you don't have to go out and buy it. And you want to put it in a shallow dish like a pie plate. And then you just want to lay your pine cone nestled in there good. And then scoop the bird seed on top of it. And then kind of roll it and push it down and scoop it on top and roll it like corn on the cob. 
And you want to keep pushing that seed down in there good. You might be able to get it in in between the, the pine cone um, leaves themselves. And that will help um, leave some seed for later birds when the initial seed is um, eaten off. And just keep going around, making sure it's completely covered. If you can feel, if it still feels sticky, you need more seed on it. And just keep rolling it and pushing it in. And rolling and pushing. We use the mixed wild bird seed here, and that's what we're providing for you at the library. Um, but if you know for sure in your yard that you've got a certain type of bird, you can go to the store and buy the bird seed for that specific bird. And then when you're all done, you can lift it up out of the seed, and there's your finished bird feeder. Yay, how cute is that? And it's all organic, because when the birds eat all the seeds off of it, you're left with the pine cone, and you can refill it and do it all over again. And you'll have birds that won't starve all winter long. And when you're left with this leftover seeds, you can sit here and play with it. And you get out your monster trucks and drive trucks through it. You can draw letters like A for autumn or F for fall. Have fun playing in your bird seed. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed our crafts that we made today. And I look forward to seeing you again next week in our next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.